the greatest story never finished. We talk about Hunter x Hunter a fair amount on this channel, whether that's sitting down and explaining all the Dark Continent could possibly have to offer, or ranking and explaining the members of the Zoldic family. There is so much to talk about in this universe that I could have an entire channel dedicated to it. And a lot of you probably know me for my Hunter x Hunter content, because it is my favorite anime and manga of all time. So I tend to yap about it about as frequently as I can. However, there is one topic in Hunter x Hunter that I've been avoiding for a couple of years, and that topic is Gyro. See, Gyro, for those of you who don't know, is one of the most enigmatic characters in manga and anime history, but more so in manga history as it pertains to Hunter x Hunter. See, to those of you who have only watched a 2011 adaptation of Hunter x Hunter, Gyro is kind of a character that was oddly thrown in for one episode. They were established to be the previous king of the NGL, they were said to be able to resist the urges of the Queen Ant, and were able to walk out of the NGL their own free man ant. And to anime-only watchers, this was kind of weird. Sure, I guess you could say this was Togashi giving us a little ounce of history about the NGL, the country that we're going to be spending a lot of time in, and sure it explains why the NGL is so cut off from the rest of the world and why there's no electronics, and sure you could say that explaining Jaro's history and the foundation of the NGL is meant to make us watchers or readers a bit more aware of geopolitical situations in the real world that might reflect this backstory. But even with all of that considered, it's still odd, taking minutes away to focus on a man who for all intents and purposes, doesn't matter in the story. And while I'm not gonna sit here and say that Gyro matters in the manga, he matters more in the manga. Because in the manga, after we're done being introduced to Gyro as a character and being told his backstory, we're left with an incredibly ominous quote. See, it's established in the manga, but not the anime for some reason, that Gyro, as a chimera ant that walked away from the queen, is in the same town that Gon and Kilua are in when they were training with Knuckle and Shoot. And in fact, the ending of chapter 203 hints that there's a possibility that Gyro, Gon, and Kilua might all bump into each other. How that's a very bad thing, because Gyro is one of the most evil men the world has ever known. However, it's about halfway through chapter 204 that it's revealed to us that Gyro doesn't bump into Gon and Kilua, which makes us ask the question, okay, then why was he introduced? Well, the quote that was given to us to essentially explain why he was introduced was given to us in this very same chapter, when the narrator said, Gyro left town and disappeared without encountering Gon. Whether this proved to be fortunate for either party will be not known until they ultimately meet. From this point on, for the next 196 chapters, Gyro is never once again seen. Though he is mentioned by characters like Welfin, but this two chapter introduction of the former king of the NGL, who had enough will to walk away from the Chimera Ant Queen who made him, piqued the interest of readers and watchers everywhere, who all wanted to know, where did Gyro go? And will we ever see him again? And the reason I've avoided making this video for numerous years is because I don't think we will ever see him again. Not because Togashi doesn't have a plan to use Gyro later on in the story. I believe that Gyro could be one of the final villains of Hunter x Hunter, but because we'll probably never see Togashi tell this part of the story. But this doesn't mean that there isn't a wealth of incredible theories that explain why Gyro is introduced and what his future role might be in Hunter x Hunter, which is why today we're talking Hunter x Hunter's final boss explained. But before we get to explaining anything, guys, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell. And if you don't want to see me become the final boss of your life, go ahead and follow my anime podcast, Talkers Anonymous, where me and Danny Mata break down everything that happened in anime this week. It's available on YouTube, Spotify, and Apple Podcasts. And if you want to look like the final boss of your life, go ahead and meander on over into my merch store, TakuzAnonymous.net, where you can pick up some of the greatest anime t-shirts, sweatshirts, and sticker packs known to man. So, who is Gyro? What are their motivations? Why were they able to resist the Chimera Ant Queen? And what did Togashi have planned for them? Well, all those are incredible questions, with answers that vary depending on which way you believe Gyro's character is going to spy. But in order to build out this story of the possible final boss of Hunter x Hunter, we gotta start this video in the way that we tend to start these videos off, by answering the easy questions. So, who is Gyro. Well, Gyro is the previous founder and king of the NGL. And for those of you who don't remember, the NGL is the Neo Green Life Autonomous Region, a region that was seemingly built for people to live a simpler life in without the restraints of technology or social pressures of the modern day world. It's kind of like Amish country, and therefore getting in and out of this country is very difficult, which is why it was perfect for the uprising of the Chimera Ants. However, it's revealed about a quarter of the way through the Chimera Ant arc that the NGL wasn't actually found to give people a simpler, slower life, but instead to operate as a massive front 
for a drug production mafia being run by a man by the name of Gyro. See, Gyro figured, and correctly, mind you, that if he stripped an entire country of its technology and made everyone live simple farming lives, that he, as the only person with technology, would be able to rule over that country very easily, and that he would be able to use the fact that people within the boundaries of this country were living a somewhat religious and simple life to bar people from entering the country and looking into what's happening, possibly behind some closed doors. But why? Why was Gyro trying to build a drug empire? Was it for money? Was it for fame? Was it for clout? Now, Gyro wants the world to burn, and he wants the world to burn because of his childhood. See, Gyro grew up in a construction camp, living alone with an alcoholic, abusive father who wanted nothing to do with him. And therefore, because the only person in Gyro's life wanted nothing to do with him, Gyro learned to work long before he learned to talk, as Gyro wouldn't speak his first words until he was seven years old. But Gyro wasn't put on this earth to talk. He was put on this earth to work for his abusive, alcoholic father, make money so that he could then give that money to his abusive, alcoholic father. And thus, from pretty much the moment that Gyro was able to pick things up, he was working in the construction camp and giving all of his earnings to his alcoholic father who would beat him at the smallest annoyance. See, Gyro and his father lived in a small apartment and the only furnishing in that apartment was a bunk bed. A bunk bed that Gyro slept on the top bunk of. And it was in this bunk bed that Gyro spent the majority of his time when he wasn't working, as Gyro's father specifically forbade him from any access to the outside world, which is one could imagine where Gyro got the idea for the NGL. In fact, the only time that Gyro was allowed to leave the house if it wasn't going to work was to go use the communal washroom in the construction camp, but only during the daytime, as Gyro wasn't allowed to leave the house post 9pm. So if Gyro ever had to go to the bathroom at night, he would have to relieve himself into empty alcohol bottles on the top bunk, all without making any noise. And this is something that Gyro got relatively good at, as the bunk bed that he slept in the top bunk of was incredibly creaky, and thus every single time he moved, the bed creaked. And if it creaked too much, his father would beat him. And thus Gyro learned to live, sleep, and operate completely silently, which lived up to the mantra that his father beat into him on a daily basis. Don't make trouble for anybody. But why did Gyro deal with all this? Well, Gyro actually adored his father for two separate reasons. The first of which is that Gyro almost died of a fever when he was five years old, and he believed that his father stayed up all night with him, switching out his cold compresses on his forehead to make sure that his fever broke. Because of that, Gyro believed, regardless of how his father acted, he truly did care about him. And Gyro believed that this was backed up by the second reason that he loved his father, and that was the fact that his father never once told him to leave, which made Gyro believe that his father loved him enough to make sure he always wanted him around, once again, regardless of how he acted. However, when Gyro turned 12 years old, an older drunken boy began to laugh at him, began to make fun of Gyro's alcoholic, problematic father, who the rest of the construction camp looked down on. Now, this older drunken boy believed that he could do this to Gyro because there was no chance that Gyro, who gets abused by his alcoholic father every single day, would ever stand up to the likes of me. However, Gyro does, and he attacks the boy. And the older boy, reeling from the fact that this supposed coward actually attacked him, revealed the truth of Gyro's situation, to him. And the truth of his situation was that the two reasons that Gyro loved his father were incredibly misguided. See, because the first reason that Gyro loved his father is because he believed he stayed up all night switching his cold compresses. But this boy reveals to Gyro that that wasn't his father. No, instead, it was the elderly man who lives next door to them. However, Gyro was so out of it because he was so sick, he couldn't tell the difference between the two of them. In fact, Gyro's father went so far and is not caring of Gyro that he actually got into a fight with the older man when the older man started screaming at him, saying, this is your son, do you not care if he lives or dies? As for the second reason that Gyro loves his father, because he's never told him to leave, that's because Gyro works and gives all his money to his alcoholic father, which he can then use to buy cheap booze. Now naturally, Gyro, who reveres his father as a god, wouldn't believe this, except for the fact that while he was getting beaten by this older and drunken boy, he sees his father walk past, and he makes eye contact with Gyro, and he does nothing. He simply keeps walking because he truly cares nothing for this boy. And it was in that moment that it was cemented in Gyro's mind that this boy was correct. And it's at this moment that Gyro, laying bloody in the street, thought about the mantra that his father had been beating into his head for years. And it's at this point that Gyro began to contemplate on this mantra, don't ever make trouble for anyone, was actually, don't ever make trouble for me. Wait, no, that's not right. It's not don't make trouble for me, it's don't make trouble for any human. 
because I am less than human. Yes, in this moment, Gyro realized that for the entirety of his life, he had been treated as less than human. And this is the first in many times in Gyro's life that he realizes that he is separated from humanity. Infuriated by this realization, Gyro picks himself up from the bloody heap that he's become, grabs a nearby hammer, and smashes his father's skull in, killing him. And it's after this that Gyro decides to leave the construction camp. And nine years after that, at 21 years old, Gyro would found the NGL. And nine years after that, at 30, he would become its king. Now, being the king of the NGL really just boiled down to Gyro being the only authority figure in this entire autonomous region as he created an empire of drugs. Now, specifically, that empire was built on his D-squared drug, or his DD drug, which was an ingestible pill created from the birria tree, which is grown in the NGL region. Now, it's never exactly stated what the D2 pill does to those who ingest it. However, we are given a little bit of context on the D2 pill to say that it's the new up and coming hot drug on the streets of the V6 countries. However, since we understand what Gyro's grander goal in life was, and that was the destruction of humanity, it's probably safe to assume that the D2 drug was incredibly addicted, and thus those who would take it would become dependent on it, and their humanity would be destroyed. But with the foundation of a drug empire requires a whole lot of employees, and thus Gyro employed hundreds, if not thousands of people, which gave him essentially a small standing army in the NGL, all of whom had weapons when the rest of the NGL didn't. And one of the people that he employed was a man by the name of Zykahal, who would later become the rather important Chimera Ant Welfin. Now, Zykahal or Welfin also had a terrible childhood. Most people who are trying to manufacture a drug that destroys all of humanity probably didn't have great childhoods. But Zykahal and Gyro became the best of friends, as they would stay up late nights and argue about who had worst luck between the two of them and whose life was rougher. However, this friendship didn't last as long as it could have, because the Chimera Ant Queen ended up in a cave in the NGL. Paris didn't put her there. And thus, as the Chimera Ant Queen was able to make stronger and stronger Chimera Ants, the relatively defenseless NGL was quickly taken over. And the only spot of resistance that the Chimera Ants ever saw in the NGL was Gyro's operation. However, it wasn't enough resistance, and Gyro and Zykahal were eaten, and they would later become the Chimera Ants, Gyro and Welfin. But while Welfin was a relatively standard Chimera Ant who remembered bits and pieces of his life, most notably Gyro, Gyro was anything but. See, Gyro, from the second he was born as a Chimera Ant, had such an insanely strong will to impart his evil upon the world that he rejected the Chimera Ants will, and thus in essence became the first Chimera Ant to remember the integrity of their previous life. And while Chimera Ants remembering their previous life is a thing that happened more and more often down the Chimera Ant arc, as Welfin, Ecolgo, Colt, and Kite all remembered pretty large portions of their life by the end of the Chimera Ant arc, Gyro remembered the entirety of his life from the second he was reborn as a Chimera Ant. And thus, in a sense, Gyro is often considered to be the first Chimera Ant King, as Maron was the only other person born with the ability to move against the will of the Chimera Ant Queen. In fact, one could say that Maron Wim's very birth was him moving against the will of the Chimera Ant Queen. However, what's all the more impressive about the fact that Gyro decided to revolt against the Chimera Ant Queen is the fact that Neferpito had already been born. And while Pito probably wasn't keeping an eye on all the Chimera Ants to see if any of them were casually walking out of the NGL as they were readying for the birth of the king, this means that Gyro knowingly betrayed the Chimera Ant Queen who was backed by an insanely strong royal guard. And Pito, like all the other royal guards, was born with a full affinity for Ned. That does this mean that Pito was blasting her and all across the NGL when Gyro decided to walk out? Who knows? But having the will and the resolution to fly in the face of an incredibly well-established and very powerful army that was the currently building Chimera Ants is impressive, and it's because Gyro was able to walk away from the Chimera Ant Queen that Gyro was able to end up in the same town as Godin Kilua when they were training with Knuckle and Shoot. That's why we were able to get a foreshadowing that one day Gyro and Gon would meet. But why would Gyro and Gon ever have to meet? Well, because of the current plot trajectory of Hunter x Hunter. See, it's loosely implied by Chapter 312, I believe, that Gyro went to Meteor City. It's Chapter 315. Because Welfin, Hina, and Bezef, the former political ambassador to the NGL, no, East Gorto, I always get, I always get the NGL and East Gorto mixed up, are heading to Meteor City. Bezef is heading there because he's now a political refugee and he really has nowhere to go where he'll be wanted outside of Meteor City, and Welfin and Hina want to 
Psycho because one, they're Chimera Ants and they can't really blend in anywhere, and two, because they believe Gyro is heading to Meteor City. Now, the reason that they believe that Gyro is in Meteor City is because he just lost his entire army, his drug ring, his country, and thus he's going to need to actively recruit a new army, find a new country, find a new backing, a new trade, if he ever wants to bring his evil to the world. And what better place to do that than the living trash heap that is Meteor City, a place so vile it created the Phantom Troop, who are conveniently not there. See, for those of you who aren't caught up with Hunter x Hunter, let me give you a little rundown of what's happening in the manga. Basically, everyone who's ever been important in the entire story, minus Kilawa and Gon, is on their way to the Dark Continent. Now, this is happening because for a long time in the center of Mobius Lake, there was five countries, and all five of these countries were forbidden to go to the Dark Continent. However, a sixth country was founded, and because they didn't sign the legal agreement to never go to the Dark Continent, they get to go to the Dark Continent. But nobody else wants them to go to the Dark Continent because every trip to the Dark Continent brings back something known as the Five Calamities. Well, there's probably more calamities, but there's been five trips that brought back five calamities. So basically the V5 countries said, okay, you can become a new country. We can become the V6 countries, but then we're going to send all of our greatest forces to the dark continent on a massive ship to ensure that A, nothing comes back and B, to make sure that we can keep an eye on you. Because if your expedition goes well, that means that you have rights to the entirety of the dark continent and the dark continent should be split evenly between all V6 countries. So currently on that ship, which is called the Black Whale, is the entire royal family of the Akeen Empire, the newly founded V6 country, Kilowa, the 12 Zodiacs, who are the 12 strongest hunters handpicked by Isaac Natero to rule over the Hunter Association as an Illuminati of sorts, several very important Mafia families, the Phantom Troop, and Hisoka. Oh, and Jing and Periston, but Jing's one of the 12 Zodiacs, so I guess that makes sense. So like I said, everybody who's not a Chimera Ant, Gon, Kilowa, or the Zoldix is on the Black Whale, which means a couple of things. One, the Phantom Troop is not in Meteor City, and they can't get back to Meteor City. Two, the 12 Zodiacs, the strongest hunters on Earth, also can't get back to the V6 countries. And finally, three, the entire world is so worried about the Dark Continent expedition that they're really not looking anywhere else. So there's never been a better time in the history of time to build an evil army. Because the morally gray thieves group that rules over Meteor City is gone, and therefore you can operate in total secrecy in Meteor City as it falls under the jurisdiction of literally no country, and you can gobble up all their territory and recruit all the people who are loyal to them. And even if people did catch on to you building a giant evil army, one, they would have to march into Meteor City, and two, all the strongest people on Earth are on a big whale-shaped boat. So. Is this what Gyro is doing? Is he building a giant evil army in Meteor City that Gon and Kilwa are gonna have to face down against? Maybe. See, parallel storylines are nothing new to Tagashi. The Hunter x Hunter universe is as wide as it is deep, and thus characters can be embroiled in different timelines simultaneously. However, there is some slight issues. See, while Kilawa is still incredibly strong after the conclusion of the Chimera Ant arc, and is rapidly on his way to one day be the chief of the Zoldic family, his number one priority is protecting Aluka against his family and the rest of the world. So will we see Kilawa again as a character? Who's to say? However, for as many doubts you have for seeing Kilowa again, you should have double for seeing Gon. As prior to the Black Whale's departure, Gon and Jing were seen talking. At which point, Jing asked Gon to produce Nen. And if Gon could produce Nen, then Jing would take him along on the expedition. And while Gon could technically produce a small amount of aura, it was basically nothing at all. And thus, for all intents and purposes, Gon is Nenless. So if Gon and Kilowa were to find themselves embroiled in a battle against Gyro, one, they would once again have to to get together, and two, they would have to find some way to get Gon's Nen back. How could they do that? Well, they could go through Alaka, as Alaka is able to grant any wish that Hisoka asks for, though that'd be kind of stupid because Nanaka is the person who healed Gon, so to have her come back and then give Gon aura would just be. I don't know, like lazy writing, I guess? There is the possibility that Gon and Kilowa could find the Nen Exorcist and have him exercise the self-imposed condition that Gon put on himself to take all of his aura of his entire life and use it in that one moment. Or there's a possibility that somehow Gon getting his Nen back could tie into Gyro. As a perfect way to kick off the storyline of Gon and Kilowa restarting their adventure would be Kilowa, through his Zoldic family connections, hearing about Gyro and Meteor City, and about how Gyro is committing these miracles that is either awakening people to Nen or saving them from Nen affliction. 
direction. And thus, Kilua would go to Gon, who he knows is now Nenlis, and be like, all right, Gon, we're going to go to Meteor City. We're going to meet with this guy, Gyro. At which point, when they get to Gyro, Gyro is able to restore Gon's Nen, but the restoration is conditional, and Gon is now enslaved to Gyro, or something like that, which would play into this idea of Gyro being a false prophet or a false king, who, instead of helping the world, is actively trying to hurt it. And while I do think that possibility is as likely as anything else, and that likelihood is... What I do think is the most likely possibility for what Gyro's story was supposed to be was that yes, Gyro is supposed to be a new dictator in Meteor City who takes it over because of the absence of the Phantom Troop. And while Gyro does recruit all the ruffians and thrown away people of Meteor City, his true purpose in taking over Meteor City is the gathering collection and training of Parasyn's Chimera Ant army. For those of you who don't know, Parasyn has an army of 5,000 Nen using Chimera Ants. Just to put that into perspective a little bit, there there's around 660 hunters in the entire world, and Paristin has 5,000 Nen using Chimera Ants. And while none of these Chimera Ants are on Merowim's level of strength, they're all said to be somewhere in the region of Palm as a Chimera Ant's strength, which is to say about as strong as your average to high level hunter, which means whoever is in control of those 5,000 Chimera Ants is basically in control of the world. Because well, yes, humanity has bombs, and yes, people like Knuckles said that Merowim could be defeated with an entire national army, mobilizing 5,000 Nen users is a great way to take over the entirety of the V6 countries. So what's gonna happen, Nick? Is Gyro gonna steal Paristin's Chimera Ant army? No, he's not because Paristin's gonna give it to him. See, I'm fully in the camp of believing that Paristin placed the Chimera Ant Queen in the NGL because Paristin knew that the NGL wouldn't be able to fight back against the future that the Chimera Ant Queen would rot. And therefore, I believe with the entirety of my heart that Paristin is responsible for the Chimera Ant Arc, which is why Paristin was able to gobble up 5,000 Nen using Chimera Ants and seal them God knows where. On top of this, Paristin was also aware of the movements of Beyond Netera and how those movements would initiate the Black Whale to parting for the Dark Continent. And therefore, if you want to go truly galaxy brain and all of this, like Togashi and Paristin probably are, Paristin understood that one, Jing wants to go to the Dark Continent because Don Freaks, his grandfather, is there. However, Jing wouldn't go to the Dark Continent unless Paristin went to the Dark Continent. And Jing is probably the only person on the V6 countries who would be able to figure out what Paristin's scheme was was. And thus the reason that Paristin so half-assedly tried to kill Jing when Jing joined Paristin's squad on the Black Whale, it was that Paristin wanted it to look like to Jing that Paristin didn't want him there. And you can actually see Jing make these deductions. However, if Jing does believe that Paristin's ulterior motives are on the Dark Continent, Paristin, in order to help Gyro, can lure the entirety of humanity's strongest fighting forces away from the V6 countries so that Gyro can raise an army of 5,000 Nen using Chimera Ants in the newly abandoned Meteor City. And who's gonna battle against these 5,000 Chimera Ants? Well, ideally, the Zoldix and Go. And do I believe that the Black Whale trip being a faux pas created by Paristin to lure away all the strongest fighters on Earth from the V6 countries just so the real action can happen back on the V6 countries, forcing the Black Whale to turn around, would be one, a satisfying way to end this story, and two, a much shorter ending than exploring the entirety of the Dark Continent. And as we all know, Togashi isn't exactly looking forward to a drawn-out ending, and thus the brevity of this ending is one, good for Togashi, and two, good for the fan base who gets to see their favorite story ended. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Do we never get to see the Dark Continent? No, we don't. But exploring it in the first place was not a good idea when the mangaka is dying. He's not dying, it's just like he's bedridden and his shoulder really hurts. And will I take any ending over the ending that was announced onto Twitter a couple of months ago? Yeah, absolutely. But I don't write Hunter Hunter, and I can't draw. Could I write a light novel that finishes the story in a way that I believe would do it justice? Absolutely I could, I think. I mean, that might be egotistical. I have read the manga front to back like eight times, so... <laughs> I know it pretty well. Ah, oh, Togashi, just write the goddamn book. But anyways, yeah, that's what I believe Gyro's supposed to do in the story. Serve as the final boss, the second Chimera King, stronger than Meruem, but not in power, but in legislative power. A man who controls the largest army ever seen in the Hunter Hunter world, battling against the weakest version of a Hunter Association the world has ever known. And thus in this moment, our two MCs will come back together to battle the hardest fight known to man. And through the combination of the powers of Gon, Kilawa, the Zoldix, and definitely Nanika, and maybe through the backup brought through the Black Whale managing to make it back to the V6 countries in time, Gyro and his army of 5,000 Chimera Ants will be defeated. And Paristin, the true bad guy of Hunter Hunter, 
will finally either be arrested or laid to rest. But do you guys agree with this theory or do you have any other gyro theories that you find interesting? Tell me in the comments below. And while you guys are down there, please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page and hit that noti bell. Oh, <laughs> I just write the light novel.